welcome to Minute with Nature. I'm your host, Lauren Azuri, the park naturalist for West Bloomfield Parks. We're outside our nature room today talking about endothermic and ectothermic animals, or more commonly known as warm-blooded and cold-blooded animals. So warm-blooded animals, for example, of birds and mammals, can control their own temperature. So internally, they're able to make themselves stay warmer, no matter what the temperature is around them. Whereas our cold-blooded ectothermic animals, like fish, amphibians, reptiles, and some insects, they depend on their surroundings to uh, regulate their temperature. So if they're in a cold environment, they are generally colder. If they're in a warm environment, they're generally warmer. That is why a lot of times um, you'll see reptiles like snakes sunning themselves um, on a black asphalt that absorbs heat, or you'll see turtles sunning themselves on a log because they, want, they need to get warmer. You'll also notice with ectothermic animals, those cold-blooded animals, that they're more sluggish and slower moving when their environment is cooler because it does affect their muscles. And when their muscles are colder, they move slower. That's another difference too, is how they spend their winter. So warm-blooded endothermic animals, if they're not able to survive during the winter, they go into hibernation mode and they, they do like a long deep sleep. Whereas cold-blooded animals like reptiles and amphibians, they could do what's called brumination. They slow down completely. They almost have an antifreeze in their blood that keeps them surviving the winter under those below freezing temperatures. And that's the difference mainly between endothermic and ectothermic or warm-blooded and cold-blooded animals. And that's your minute with nature.